Hello, I'm Mr. Lineweber, and this is 4.1, Equivalent Rational Expressions in Math 30-2. So we start off with basically what is the definition of a rational expression here on page 102. And a rational expression, if we think back to Math 10, a rational uh, was just a basically a fraction, so two integers stacked on top of each other. Now, uh, a rational expression is just going to be a fraction that involves polynomials. So, remember, we have two expressions. We have the numerator, and we have the denominator, and those are both going to be polynomials. And if it's just a number, remember that a number is also just a polynomial. It's just a constant. The next definition is the non-permissible value, which we will hyphenate as n, p, v. So it's basically the variable in the denominator that is not allowed. It's not permitted. For example, in the f example that they give us here, if x happened to be minus 15, then what would happen is you would end up with a situation where you were 10 divided by 0. Now, division by 0 is not permitted. They say that it is undefined in the sense that if you had 10 cookies and you wanted to divide them up into zero friends, uh, it doesn't make any sense. So we got to keep that idea in our heads moving forward throughout the whole unit. And I'll revisit it again on the next page. So we're going to talk about equivalent rational expressions. Uh, in the same sense as you used to talk about lowest common uh, or lowest terms form for a fraction uh, earlier in your math studies. So, for example, 8 divided by 12 is the exact same fraction as 4 on top of 6, which is the exact same fraction as 2 on top of 3. So these are called equivalent ratios, and I'm working my way down to smaller numbers by just repeatedly dividing by common factors. So a similar idea is what we were talking about in the last video. Now I could also make these values larger if I multiplied by a common factor. And so we'd end up with something like 16 on 24. Okay, so these are equivalent ratios, which you should be familiar with. Now we'll have an analogy for that for the rational expressions. So, for example, 4x squared plus 8x over 4x, what we can do is we can remove a common factor, just like 8 and 12. So, let's redo that one. I'll show you how you do it with this process I'm about to show you. They both have a common factor of 4. That's the greatest common factor between 8 and 12. And then, when you divide 4 out of each term by factoring it out to the left, we can see that it will actually simplify and divide out. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And we end up with the lowest terms. So this is the idea that we want. This is what we're going to call fully simplified. So when you see examples uh, in the homework that say simplify, that's what they want. They want you to have it in lowest terms. So taking a look at the numerator, you can see that they have a common factor of 4x, and when you divide that out, you end up with x plus 2. And so the 4x on top and the 4x on the bottom are actually going to simplify to 1, because they're identical. 4x divided by 4x, everything cancels for 1, and you're left with x plus 2. Now this is true as long as x is not 0, what we call a non-permissible value. Because if x was 0, then you'd end up with a situation where you'd be dividing by 0, and that's not permitted. So this is true. This simplification is equivalent as long as that non-permissible value uh, is established. Now, of course, this isn't the only way we can go to write something that's equivalent. In fact, there's an infinite amount of equivalent expressions that we could think of. So 4x squared plus 8x over 4x. What I could do is just simply multiply by any number. As long as I multiply on the top and the bottom, 
the same number, then I'm going to get an equivalent ratio. So times in the top by 2, I get 8x squared plus 16x. Just remember to distribute the 2 onto both. And then here on the bottom, we have 8x. So this is another equivalent rational expression. And so for the most part, when we're working with equivalent rational expressions, we're going to follow this process here where we factor and then we simplify. Uh, but remember that you can actually make these expressions um, in an infinite amount of ways by just multiplying by any uh, common factor on the top and the bottom. So for example, the first one, I can't factor it. I c there's nothing in the top and the bottom that are... Um, yeah, there's nothing I can really do. So all I can maybe think of, well, maybe I'll times the top by 3. Maybe I'll times the bottom by 3. And as long as it's the same number, it's totally valid. And why did I choose 3? I don't know. Didn't have to. Could have chosen 4. 4 would have worked as well. In fact, any number will work. And so this is an equivalent rational expression. Just remember that when you multiply into binomials that you're going to be distributing. However, what we want to get used to in this process, um, in this unit, is factoring to cancel. So in the numerator, you can see that they have a 5y in common. And when I factor that out, I'll get 1 plus 2y. And in the denominator, I have a 10y. And so what's left over here, this GCF and this uh, denominator here, they're both monomials in the sense that they can be combined together and simplified. So 5 divided by 10 is 1 half, and y and y are going to cancel. And so this equivalent expression is going to be 1 plus 2y over 2. with the condition that, of course, y is not allowed to be 0 because of our non-permissible values. Now, I'm going to talk more about that later on. So it's just a bit of a warm-up and an introduction here on the page 102. Make sure we understand what a rational expression is, what a non-permissible value is. This is going to be very important, these NPVs. And this idea about creating a rational expression that is equivalent, so two processes where we can factor and simplify or just multiply top and bottom by the same number. Now, as we go and progress through the unit, it's going to be the factoring and the simplifying that we focus on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about non-permissible values. Remember that division by zero is what is not defined. So we only care about what the denominator is in the sense that the denominator is not allowed to be equal to zero. So that's what we need to consider. Only the denominator when talking about the non-permissible values. Non-permissible values. Okay, so let's focus on that denominator, a squared plus a. When is this going to be equal to zero? That's a great question, and I don't know. It's a tough one to answer, but... If we factor, this question becomes really simple. Because when it's factored, take out an a and you're left with a plus 1. Now we're considering the idea something times another thing is going to give us 0. Well, when does that happen? When do you multiply two things and get 0? Well, that's when the first term is 0 or the second term is 0. So that's all we have to consider. So in our example, a will be 0, or the term a plus 1 will be 0, which yields a cannot be negative 1. So these are the non-permissible values, and we would write them simply like this. a is not allowed to be 0 and negative 1, because if a was those two values, then you'd end up with division by 0. So plug in a 0 here, you're going to get 0 over 0, and that's not defined. And if you plug in a negative 1, you're going to get 4 over 0, which is, again, undefined. So, not allowed. 
So remember, you're only focused on the denominator when discussing non-permissible values. So a common uh, theme is when you have a monomial, a single term that involves x, and when you're in this case, in this situation, it's always just going to be simply x cannot be 0. Whenever you have a monomial, a single term with a variable, then x is not allowed to be 0. When you have a binomial that's kind of complex and it's not factored, you have to factor this. So let's do that right now. Take out a... looks like we can only take out a t. And then you're left with 3t minus 1. So our question is, when will this be 0? And you have to factor this to answer this question. And so simply the first term gives us the fact that t can't be 0. Same idea as this box. And then when we end up with a binomial, this thing here, 3t minus 1, cannot be 0. You, you can do it the long way, so add 1, add 1. Divide 3, divide 3 get the answer or you need to come up with a bit of a shortcut and so the shortcut is simply going to be when you're in a binomial situation like this I want you to cover up I'm going to use my pointer here cover up the three like it wasn't there cover up the three ask yourself you know what is the opposite of minus one well that's plus one and then how do you get rid of this three you just divide it out and so that's a shortcut way to answer because uh, it'll happen so often when you're doing these questions, you end up with a binomial with a coefficient right there. You want to get good and quick at it. And then finally, part C, factor the denominator. So we'll take out a 4, and then you end up with x minus 2. Now this one's important to consider because what ends up happening is students see, oh, this is a monomial with the variable. Well, here's a monomial and so they really want to go okay well here x can't be 0 and then of course this one x can't be 2 but when you focus in on this this actually isn't true because there's no x written there so if there's no x written there you in fact don't need the x can't be 0 you don't need that one so this is the only non permissible value for this question x can't be 2 as it is the opposite of a negative 2 and there's no x on the coefficient out front there so that's the only non-permissible value.